Hi everyone, I uh, just wanted to um, continue on from my last video. So here's part two of uh, my uh, experience I was talking about um, when I was in the Himalayas with my narcissist. So let me continue on with that. Um, so here I am, you know, basically going blind. I, I can't see like this close even in front of my face. Um, I have a spiked fever. It feels like almost like 105 or something. My brains are turning to mush. And here I have this, you know, demonic piece of shit with me, um, basically completely uncaring, telling me to stop crying, telling me, you know, all of the things you basically don't tell a person when they're going through distress. So here I am, um, not only suffering on an extremely horrendous physical level, but also being pelted with emotional abuse by the person who's claiming that they're my soulmate and that they're so in love with me they can't live without me. So here I am in 5,000 meters up in the Himalayas and so we start to descend the mountain because I just think, you know, my survival mode kicks in and I think I've got to do something, I've got to get down. So there he is following me and he finds it funny that I can't see. Like, he finds it hilarious. He is just sitting there with this fucking narc smirk on his face, like, basking in my physical pain, my distress, and the fact that I'm basically almost completely blind. So he just finds this hilarious, right? And here we are on the mountain going down. We're walking along these, like, landslides on the mountain, right, which are pretty dangerous. And the fact that I'm almost completely blind was pretty terrifying because, you know, he had to hold my hand, otherwise I could have easily fallen down. You know, the paths were so narrow on these landslides, I could have easily fallen down and just, that would have been the end of it for me. I could have easily died. So here we are walking along these dangerous landslides, which walking with your eyes, all your eyesight would have been dangerous enough, let alone almost completely blind. So here we are walking and he just uh, is like, all right, pose, take, a, let's take a photo of you. And I'm thinking, no, motherfucker, I am completely blind almost. I look like shit. I feel like I'm dying and I don't want a photo. You know, I, I just have this look on my face of just like, you know, complete exhaustion. I'm just really pissed off. I'm angry. I'm upset. I'm, I'm worried that I might not get my eyesight back. And here he is like, oh, I want to take a photo. So he just finds this all really funny because he's well, he's not even human. So then he takes a photo of me, and he shows it to me, and I can see on my, you know, I can't really even see it, but, I mean, after the fact, and after my vision came back and all that, I could see I look really angry. I have this pissed off look on my face, but he just relished in that, because this is what these, these narcissists, these sociopaths, these predators do. They, they feed off of your pain. They feed off of your suffering. So if you have anything like a physical ailment like I did or anything like that, they just find it hilarious and they'll just laugh and they love to see other people suffer. So this is the really sick thing about these predators. So so we're up in the mountains and here I am suffering and we finally get down. And um, so he's too cheap to get us a, any other transport like a donkey or a horse or whatever to get me down the mountain faster. So instead we're walking this. I mean... I am, like, trudging along here, sick as fuck. I've got a, you know, my brains are boiling, about to spill outside of my head, like, uh, you know, I'm on fire, my my whole body, uh, some kind of bacterial infection, I had to keep stopping, going to the bathroom, and then I, you know, of course I can't even see, you know, my, my, my vision's almost gone, I, it's just everything around me is a blur, and I didn't see black spots or anything, but I just literally couldn't see, I mean, everything was like a blur in front of me. I couldn't make out anything. I didn't know what it was in front of me. Um, even if you held something this close, I couldn't see it. It was still all blurry. So here we are walking more down the mountain and we get to this village and lo and behold, there's, there's no doctor there. The doctor had already left that day. We got there too late. Go figure. So by the time we got to that village, there was no doctor there. So we were stuck. We were stuck in a, a cabin and just had to wait it out. <sighs> so while we're in there, you know, he tries to have you know, sex with me and all of this, and he couldn't care less that I'm, you know, sick and my brains are boiling out and, you know, that I, I just, I, I'm blind. He, he really doesn't care about any of that. He just cares about himself and cares about, you know, his own needs, his gratification. So here we are, and I'm just in this horrible, like, you know, 
disturbed state, and he's just relishing in this. I mean, he's just basking in the fact that I'm in pain, and he's just loving it. He's got this smirk on his face, and he's just, he can't get enough of it. So here we are in this, you know, this cabin, and um, waiting for the doctor, and what does he do? He Instead of staying in the room and comforting me, he goes outside and talks to whoever he talks to, some woman staying there, and he just goes out there and talks to her while I'm sitting in the room, you know, whatever, suffering, and, and just in there. So he's out there talking to her, and then I eventually go out, and I still can barely function, I just want to get some food. And, you know, he's like, oh, you know, it's going to be all right, you know, your vision will come back and all this, trying to reassure me, and I'm thinking, like, well, okay, but I'm not really feeling reassured because I'm still sitting there, like, basically blind, almost. And then, um, we have to wait, like, two days until the doctor comes. And then when they finally come, they say, you need to keep, uh, going down the mountain, um, here's some medicine. And I had some antibiotics, and, um, slowly and surely after a couple of days, my vision started to slowly come back, which was, like, a miracle, because I thought that it was going to be truly gone, and then, so we couldn't get down the mountain by the jeep, by any jeeps or anything, because they kept leaving, I mean, they weren't hanging around, we couldn't get a ride down, and finally, um, we did end up getting a, a ride back down, but anyway, uh, the whole time, he's just spewing abuse at me, I mean, left and right, like, oh, well, you know, when you get angry, your face gets red like a monkey, ha ha ha, like, he just thought that was really funny, um, he would call me names like, you know, whale, like he would call me like a fat whale, and like a white whale, and he would call me ugly a lot of the times, like when I would be putting my makeup on or anything in the mirror, he would look over and say, well, you look ugly today anyway, I don't see why you're doing that, and just, you know, all of this horribly cutting, you know, abuse, he would just vomit and spew at me, kind of like, the girl in the exorcist movie, just this green, you know, slimy vomit, he would, like, vomit all over my face and just say these, you know, horrible, cutting, you know, uh, you know, emotional things to try to get an emotional rise out of me, but a lot of the times that he was spewing this complete and utter bullshit, these lies at me, I just tried to kind of, you know, observe, not absorb, so a lot of the times I would kind of brace myself for the attack and kind of just, you know, try not to react, but now and then, of course, I would get pretty angry and, and try to fight back and say, well, you know, like, fuck you, and, and get angry the rest of the day, but he also fed off of that because, see, you know, these predators, they feed off of many negative emotions, so whether it's anger, or sadness, um, despair over the abuse that they, they throw at you, um, they relish in it. They absolutely love, you know, your pain, your suffering, and to see that on your face is what they love the most, because they will always check for your face for an emotional reaction. They can't feel your feelings. They can't feel your emotions because they don't have those themselves, but they need to check your facial expressions to see what you're feeling, because their whole lives they have spent as predators mimicking other people's emotions and expressions on their face so that they can lure them in as bait, as prey, and take advantage and exploit them and abuse them. So this is their M.O. This is their goal. So, um, I think one of, you know, we and we all reach that point. I think, um, if we're with a narcissist or, or being abused for, I don't know, uh, however many years, some people are with them three years, some people are with, uh, stuck with them five years, ten years, but either way, you know, the abuse isn't their fault. They are literally dealing with, you know, manipulators who have been manipulating their whole lives to get what they want. So it's, it's hard to break free of that because you are being gaslighted the entire time. You are being led to believe a different version of reality, their version of reality. So you're not getting reality from these people. Um, so one of the things uh, that is, um, you know, really just, uh, you know, horrendous that I went through one of the turning points in the relationship, I would say, if you want to even call it that, I don't think it was, 
uh, it was just living hell on earth. But uh, we all reached that sort of breaking point where something inside of us is just screaming to, to, to the self-preserve, to get out. And I think uh, one of the turning points in that relationship from hell was when I was coming to him during one of his, one of the first, uh, you know, silent treatments he was giving me to, because I tried to kind of question some things and, and stand up to him and set some boundaries and say, hey, why are you, you know, messaging all these women on Instagram? These are really long, drawn-out messages as if he's trying to bait them and get inside of their heads and and uh, really get to know them in a really creepy, predatory way. So I started questioning that, and, you know, he didn't like that very much because narcissists don't like to be questioned. They don't like anyone to draw any boundaries with them, but they can have all the boundaries up in the world. They have this electric fence around them, and if you try to get over it, you are just shocked, and they will attack you for questioning them and anything that they do because, you know, of course they always have to have be on the moral high ground. Uh, and, you know, they can have all the secrets in the world they want from you, but God, you know, forbid if you have any of your own secrets. So, so what happened was, um, the turning point, you know, he knew about my history, and I, I have a long history of, you know, physical abuse in my family and abandonment, neglect, um, just, I mean, I, I've been through, like, just living hell as a, as a child, and, it's the aftermath that keeps hitting me in waves here as an adult, and it's something that, you know, it, it's serious trauma that, you know, um, is just uh, something, you know, the pain I have to live with every day. So, so you know, these predators, these narcissists, they, they love that. They love people who have wounds and who have been abused so that they can further exploit that. They are, these are predators. So, one of the turning points I would say in the relationship with Avi was when uh, I came to him with some, some feelings I had, you know, when, during the silent treatment he was giving me, he went silent on me after this because he was trying to, um, this is what they do, they give their victims the silent treatment to sort of, you know, teach them a lesson and, and make you try to beg for their attention and their approval again, which I wasn't trying to do, but I did go to him and I had a he knew about my history and all of this with depression and uh, all of that, self-harm and abuse and all, all that. So I came to him and I asked, you know, I said, I'm feeling...